Can you maybe comment on what is nihilism and is it at all a useful other sort of group of ideas that you resist against in defining ex existentialism? Yes, good, excellent. So nihilism, the, the philosopher who made the term popular, although it was used before him is Nietzsche. Nietzsche's writing in the end of the 19th century in various places where he, he published things, but largely in his unpublished works, he identifies the condition of the modern world as nihilistic. And that's a descriptive claim. He's looking around him, trying to figure out what it's like to be us now. Mm -hmm. And he says it's a lot different from what it was like to be human in 1300 or in the fifth century BCE. In 1300, like what people believed, what they the, the way they lived their lives was in the understanding that to be human was to be created in the image and likeness of God. That's the way they understood themselves. And also to be created sinful because of, you know, Adam and Eve's transgression in the Garden of Eden. And to have the project of trying to understand how, as a sinful being, you could nevertheless live a life, a virtuous life. How could you do that? And it had to do with, for them, getting in the right relation to God. He just says, we, 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 that doesn't make sense to us anymore in the end of the 19th century. God is dead, says Nietzsche famously. And what does that mean? Well, it means something like the role that God used to play in our understanding of ourselves as a culture isn't a role that, that God can play anymore. And so Nietzsche says, the role that God used to play was the role of grounding our existence. He was what it is in virtue of which we are who we are. And Nietzsche says, the idea that there is a being that makes us what we are doesn't make sense anymore. That's like Sartre's atheism. Sartre is taking that from Nietzsche. And so the question is, what does ground our existence? And the answer is nihil, nothing. Mm -hmm. And so nihilism is the idea that there's nothing outside of us that grounds our existence. And then Nietzsche asks the question, well, what are we supposed to do about that? How do we live? <laughs> and I, I, you know, I think Nietzsche has a different story than Sartre about that. Nietzsche doesn't say, doesn't emphasize this notion of radical freedom. Nietzsche emphasizes something else. He says, we're artists of life. And artists are interesting because the natural way of thinking about artists is that they're responding to something. They find themselves in a situation and they say, this is what's going to make sense of the situation. This is what I have to write. This is the way I have to dance. This is the way I've got to play the music. And Nietzsche says, we should live like that. There are constraints, but like understanding what they are is a complicated aspect of, of, of living itself. Mm -hmm. And there's a great story, I think, uh, from music that maybe helps to understand this. I think Nietzsche, of course, jazz didn't exist when Nietzsche was writing, mm -hmm. but I think Nietzsche really th is thinking of something like jazz improvisation. I mean, he, he, he talks about improvisation. There's classical improvisation. Nietzsche was, by the way, a, a, a musician. I mean, he was a composer and a pianist. Not a great one, really, <laughs> to be fair, but, but he loved music. And Herbie Hancock, who's a pianist, a jazz pianist, who played with Miles Davis for quite a while in the 60s, tells this kind of incredible story that I think exemplifies Nietzsche's view about the way in which we bear some responsibility for being creative, and that gives us a certain kind of freedom, but we don't have the, the, radical, the radical freedom that Sartre thinks. So what's mm -hmm. the story? Herbie Hancock says... They're, they're, they, I think they were in Stuttgart, he says, <laughs> playing, a, playing a, a show and things were great, he says. I'm, I'm play He's a young pianist and Miles Davis is the master. <laughs> and he says, I'm, I'm playing the, I'm back in the, the solo and I, I'm playing these chords. And he says, I played this chord and it was the wrong chord. <laughs> <laughs> he's like it just like that's what you got to say it didn't work right there 
And I thought, holy mackerel, I screwed up. You know, I screwed up. We were tight. Everything was working. And I blew it for Miles, who's doing his solo. And he said, Miles uh, paused for a moment. And then all of a sudden, he went on in a way that made my chord right. <laughs> And I think that idea that like you could be an artist who responds to what's thrown at you mm -hmm. in such a way as to make it right, by what measure? Everyone could hear it is all you can say, yeah. right? Everyone knew, wow, that really works. And I think that's not like, there are constraints. Not anything would have worked there. He couldn't have just played anything. Most of what anyone would have played would have sounded terrible. But the constraints aren't like pre-existing. They're sort of what's happening now in the moment for these listeners and these performers. And I think that's what Nietzsche thinks the right response to nihilism is. We're involved, but we're not radically free to make any choice and just stand behind it the way Sartre thinks. Our choices have to be responsive to our situation and they have to make the situation work. They have to make it right. And there's there's something about music too. So you basically have to make music of all the moments of life. And there is something about music. Why is music so compelling? And when you listen to it, something about certain kinds of music, it connects with you. It doesn't make any sense. But in that same way, for Nietzsche, you should be a creative force that creates a musical masterpiece. Exactly. And I, I think what's interesting is the question, what does it mean to be a creative force there? There's a traditional notion of creation that we associate with, with God. Mm -hmm. God <laughs> creates ex nihilo, out of nothing. Mm -hmm. And you might think that nihilism thinks that we should do that, create ex nihilo, because it's about how there's nothing at our ground. But I think the right way to read Nietzsche is to recognize that we don't create out of nothing. Miles Davis it wasn't nothing. That situation pre-existed him. It was given to him, maybe by accident, maybe it was a mistake, whatever. But he was responding to that situation in a way that made it right. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just creating out of nothing. He was creating out of what was already there.